Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Carnal Knowledge is a 1971 American erotic coming of age romantic comedy drama. The film was directed by Mike Nichols and it was written by Jules Pfeiffer. It stars Jack Nicholson, Art Garfunkel, Anne Margaret, and Candace Bergen. The storyline goes that the concurrent sexual lives of best friends Jonathan and Sandy are presented. Lives that are affected by the sexual mores of the time and their own temperaments, especially in relation to the women in their lives. The story starts in the late 1940s when they are roommates attending Amherst College together. Both of them are virgins, and they discuss the type of woman that they would each like to end up with. The more sensitive Sandy meets Susan at a college mixer and believes he'll lose his virginity to her. He goes through the process methodically, considering what she wants, but there is little true passion or romance there. The more sexually aggressive Jonathan loses his virginity to Myrtle, a steady but hidden girlfriend. Based on what each other knows about the other's relationship, both men strive for a little more of what the other has. These relationships, though, set the tone for all of their relationships that they will have in the future. Throughout their lives, they always seem not totally satisfied with each relationship, still pining for what the other has. This view might change as they and their friendship hits middle age, when Sandy is with a domineering woman named Cindy, while Jonathan is with model actress Bobby, whose life goes spiraling downward because of her relationship to Jonathan. And despite her beauty, which on the surface offered so much opportunity to her, Jonathan's trajectory in life is directed through all these experiences, and it ends up in a manner he probably did not foresee. The screenwriter, Jules Pfeiffer, said he had no idea how Jack Nicholson would tackle the multiple levels of the character Jonathan and Bobby's fight in which the character is defensive, enraged, contemptuous, and a bully. He felt that the actor got just half of what he had written on paper right, he would be more than satisfied. But Nicholson got it all right, and all on the first take. Everybody was completely astonished, the director included. The screenwriter asked the director, what he had told the young actor, and how he had gotten that performance from him. The director told him that he didn't tell him anything, that Nicholson had come up with it all himself. It took him a long time to shoot that fight scene. Actually, it took about a week. And by the time the performers were done, they had both lost their voices. Initially, when the director told the screenwriter that he was considering using Jack Nicholson for the role of Jonathan Pfeiffer, went to see Easy Rider, a film that Nicholson had starred in. He thought after seeing him in the film that he had nothing in common with the role at the center of his script. But the director, Nichols, told him, Trust me, he's going to be our most important actor since that of Brando. The director originally thought, and he actually told the screenwriter, that he didn't think he would be able to shoot the Jonathan Bobby fight scene. He thought it was too ugly and repellent for an audience to stomach. He was afraid that the audience would recoil from Jonathan and never get back into the movie. After talking it over for most of an evening, Nichols finally said, I guess we have to go ahead and shoot it, because that's what would have happened. After auditioning numerous actresses for the lead character role of Bobby, the director agreed to see Anne Margaret, who he had remembered from some of her other films. They were looking at quite a few other actresses prior to this, one of them being Karen Black, and she even tested for the role. But it was mutually decided that Karen didn't have the right figure for the role. Now this film really pushes the envelope 
on what you could have done in cinema at the time. You'll see the very first scene where a condom is shown on screen. And you'll also hear descriptive words that you've never heard in cinema before. A lot of this is probably because, originally, this was all written as a play and not a feature film. When the director Nichols read it, he saw it as a movie. Now, you'll see Carol Kane towards the end of the film, and she doesn't have a single word of dialogue in the film. This was only her second feature film. Just over four years later, in 1976, she would be Oscar-nominated for Best Leading Actress for Hester Street. Ironically, in that same year, against Anne Margaret for the film Tommy. Candace Bergen plays a big role in the film, but there was a chance that she might not be alive to do this project had things gone a little bit differently. You see, at one time, she had lived at that house on Cielo Drive where Manson and his crew went in and killed all the occupants there. The reason Manson went to that house was because he knew the man that lived there. That man was Terry Melcher, or at least he thought he still lived there. Candace Bergen and Terry Melcher were an item at the time, and they lived in this house. Once Manson knew that the people that he had killed were the wrong targets, he sent a message letting Bergen and Melcher know that he knew where they were living. They had gone to stay with Melcher's mother, who was Doris Day. And one morning, a telescope was missing from the front terrace of the house. In its place was a message to Terry telling him that, by the way, I came by and took your telescope so I know where you live. All this was just prior to Manson and his followers getting arrested for the murders of Sharon Tate. Now, a gentleman named Mr. Jenkins, who was a theater manager in Albany, Georgia, was convicted of obscenity-related charges in 1972 for showing this film in his establishment because of its frank depictions of sex and nudity. The police came in and seized the print of the film, and it went on to the Georgia Supreme Court, who upheld the conviction. The U.S. Supreme Court later struck down that conviction. As a result, when they re-released the film to theaters, they used the tagline, The United States Supreme Court has ruled that carnal knowledge is not obscene. See it now. Take a look back at this controversial film from the early 70s. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.